Hello, my old school soul food family. Chef Jeff is back with another video. All right, y'all. Tomorrow, I guess you get this on a Sunday. So that means Monday is Valentine's Day. So it's happy Valentine's Day to y'all. It has no Valentine's Day has no significance with me. Y'all know I am completely single, no married, no significant other or whatever. I give up on love years ago, y'all. <laughs> years and years ago. So like I tell my mom, my mommy say, when God so wants somebody in my life, he gonna bring them in it. Cause I had so many bad experiences and you kind of lose your trust in humanity after a few years. So it's been like 20 years. I just give up on true love, but I haven't given up on true love of cooking and cooking and making happiness for others. This is something I do for a lot of my neighbors, friends, couples or whatever. And I do a lot of romantic dinners for them also. And I absolutely love this cheesecake. You cannot go wrong with cheesecake, y'all. It's absolutely amazing. I can never eat a whole piece of cheesecake till this day because it's so rich and creamy and amazing, but it's so easy to make. And I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect cheesecake without it cracking, what steps you need to take, what methods you need to do to come out with the perfect creamy uh, cheesecake. First thing I do here, I got a springform pan here with a foil, and all a springform pan is here. I got one here I've had for years, y'all. I had this since I was in my 20s. I don't even use it anymore. All I need is a pan with the bottom in the bottom, and like this, and that helps you get the cheesecake out, and you just hit that like that. You ain't got to call it a springform pan. That's why they call it that. And this is why I call it a cheesecake pan. You can do other stuff in it. I did cakes in it. Stuff like that, but mainly it's used for cheesecakes. Now I got mine here already set up. I have foil under the bottom. I'm gonna tell you later why I got the significance of the foil on the bottom of the cheesecake pan. Because literally, if the cheesecake is not gonna come out this pan, literally, I don't really need the foil, but I'm gonna tell you why I put it later on. First thing I'm gonna do here, we're gonna get started here on the crust. All the crust deals is I got some. Japanese bread crumb. Oh, that'd be interesting with the Japanese bread crumb. But I got some graham cracker crumbs here. And I put a little sugar, man. I like a sweet, you don't have to do this. I like a sweet crust. I've always had like the sweet crust. So I like a sweet crust. Now, I'm going to put some melted butter in here. Now, melted butter, you got to put a little at a time. So you don't want to put too much. You definitely want to put a little, I mean, enough. And I'm going to show you how I know I got enough in here, y'all. Might have to put some more. Might have to melt some more butter, huh? Pour all that in there. Might have to melt a little bit more butter. We're going to see here. I'm making a mess there. You definitely want to make sure you have enough to go around the pan, y'all. Definitely want to make sure... Here. Make sure we got enough butter. I want to make sure all the breadcrumbs is coated with butter, y'all. I keep saying breadcrumbs. Oh my God. I haven't been able to talk the last couple of videos, y'all. There we go. Yeah. Now, how I test it and see if there's enough butter in the uh, brown cracker crumbs, I pick it up like this. I think I need a little bit more butter in it. All right, y'all, I'm going to step off here. I'm going to melt a little bit more butter, and we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back here. I melted a little bit more butter because I want this stuff to be really, really, I like a light, crispy crust. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, uh, cut into the cheesecake, and it falls apart on me, the crust. Okay, get all that mixed up in there. Say how I know it's a good y'all. I take it, put it in my hand. When it clump like that, I know it's ready. So what I'm gonna do? I'm dump all this in the pan here, and I'm gonna spread this out a little evenly here. Get all from. I'm gonna go from the bottom up. From the bottom up, y'all. Like I said, I like a nice thick crust, but you want to make sure the bottom is thick. Then I'm going to go on the sides here. And what I like to do, 
See my little measuring cup here? I like to let this, once I get it on the bottom, I like to use my measuring cup here and kind of push it to the sides here. See that? See that? Just go and just push it up to the side. I like that. You know how you got that nice side on the side of your cheesecake? This is the key right here, y'all. Just let the measuring cup do its thing here. Okay. A little bit more. Here we go. I'm very precise with my piece. Oh, you take the, uh -uh. the crust is very important to me, y'all, on the cheesecake. Okay. That's it. Let me show y'all here where y'all can see it. See that? That's what you want. You want the crust to go up on the side just like that. Now, I'm going to put it in the oven. What I got here? Piece of, I got a little piece of paper in there from the graham cracker bag. I don't want to bite down. Couldn't you imagine biting down on that? That wouldn't make a very, very experience with it. Hmm. Okay, put it in the oven. I'm on a crispy crust. I'm going to put it in the oven for about 15 minutes. Let this crust kind of get warm and move, marry together. That'll give you, you can put it in the refrigerator like this or you can do it like this, but I like I say, I like a nice crunchy crust on the bottom when I bite into it. So anyway, y'all, we'll be back. Once this come out the oven, then we're gonna start on the filling. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back. Let me show you the crust here. See how pretty that is? Just got out the oven. Like I say, 15 minutes in the oven. We're gonna let that set right here on the side. Now, we're going to make the filling here. Let me move y'all close up here. And y'all stay to the end of the video. I get these questions all the time, many, many times a month or whatever. Why ain't I married? Why am I single? I'm going to let y'all know why and the things I've been through and the situations I've been through, why I'm single, why I'm married, why I've never been married. And every situation is different. And I'm going to reveal that to y'all to put this, kind of put this question to rest. So everybody will know, but stay to the end of the video when I uh, do the cheesecake, I'll let y'all know. But in the meantime, let me uh, get started here. Hold on, y'all. I'll be right back. I got to get my, hold on, y'all just gonna stay right there. I got, I need to get my uh, paddle for this. Now, I'm going to do this with a paddle, not a whip. The reason is, I want to make sure I get all the lumps out of here. And I can, it's easier for me to get the lumps off the paddle than the lumps off the whip. The key to making the cheesecake you got to make sure the batter is completely smooth, y'all. Completely. To make sure it, the batter doesn't split. The cake, the cheesecake doesn't split. There's two ways. Pretty much foolproof. Watch the day my cheesecake split after I'm pumping myself up here. To make sure it's smooth. Also, to put water in the bottom of the pan, which I'm going to tell y'all later. That's why the fall. That's coming kind of significance with the fall. First thing I'm going to do, also, y'all, y'all already know me. If you ain't been knowing me long enough, make sure your stuff is room temperature, y'all. This cream cheese is room temperature. I pulled it out late last night because I knew I was going to make a uh, cheesecake today. So I got that room temperature. Now, this is how smooth that is, y'all. That's the key there. Move y'all up here. Put that all up in there, really, really nice. See, like I say, the key is want to make sure this thing is really, really smooth here. Now, I'm going to add the sour cream to this, which is going to make it even better, easier to make it smooth. So I'm going to add the sour cream to this. Put the sour cream in here. And this is going to help the significance of this here cream cheese being smooth. This is going to take about, maybe about five minutes, y'all.
So I'm going to come right back, y'all. All right, y'all, we are back here. Let me show y'all something here. See how smooth and creamy that is? See that? That's what you want. You don't want to add no sugar, no nothing to this. See how creamy that is? And smooth. That's the key to your cheesecake, y'all. Now, we're going to add the sugar to this. Little by little. We want to cream that together. That's really, really creamy. And also add the vanilla. We're going to add the vanilla too. It ain't going to hurt it. Scrape down the bowl again. Give it another scrape down here. Make sure you get all the way down to the bottom. I'm telling y'all, this is very, very important to your cheesecake. Get all that off of there. Now, we're going to add our eggs one at a time. The recipe calls for three eggs. But y'all see I'm adding four because these are so small. But somebody will say, oh, I saw you added four eggs. You must be say three. That's why I'm adding three, because they're so small, y'all. Scrape this down one more time, y'all. Do one more scrape down off the beaters to the sides, all at the bottom. Give one more good scrape down. Make sure you get all that off the beaters because later you can't take it off the beaters. All that's on the beaters right now. If you don't get it off, you do not want to add anything off the beaters after you do this because you want everything completely smooth. Like I say, it's very important, this step right here. Now. That's it, y'all. That is it, 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 it. Now. Got my pan I'm putting over here. Then move y'all over. I always make a mistake and leave y'all focused on the mixer. Okay. I'm gonna let this drip off the drip off the beater. Like I said, you do not want to scrape anything off the beater, y'all. Give it to somebody who's hanging around want to lick the beater because you don't want any lumps to come off of this. All you're gonna do, take this. Pour it right into the pan, just like that, y'all. Right into the pan now. There we go. That's it. See that? That's what you want right there. Now, the next step I'm going to do here, I'm going to take a raisin uh, cup here, and we're going to pour water in the bottom of this pan. This is gonna make sure I got an even cheesecake and it doesn't split, meaning that it cooks through evenly. So I'm pouring water right in the bottom of this pan here. That's it. We're gonna cook it 300 degrees, about 45 to 50 minutes. Check it out to 40 minutes to make sure you're gonna have that nice jiggle when it come out. You're gonna have an awesome cheesecake. So we'll be back when it come out the oven. All right, y'all, we are back. The cheesecake I just took out the oven. See y'all, it's gonna have that little jiggle to it. See that? But it is completely, completely done. Another thing I didn't tell y'all, which I didn't do, but it's okay. I didn't knock the air bubbles out of this. Sometimes that'll cause it to split, but that's a little brain cramp. 
on my my point, but other than that, it's gonna be a nice creamy cheesecake when you cut in it. But normally, I would tap it on the counter and get the air bubbles out of it. But other than that, we're gonna let this thing cool. I like to let it cool about three, four hours to so completely firm up, and then we'll come back and we will cut this cheesecake. And then I'm gonna also give you the story. Everybody asks me over and over again, why you single, why you not, and I'm going to, when I come back, y'all, before I cut the cheesecake, I'm going to let y'all know. So anyway, y'all, I'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back. It's been about four hours here, and the cheesecake is nice and cool. Now we're going to do the great unveiling, y'all, the great unveiling here. And all I do, y'all, take the, uh, take this fall off the bottom here. Put on the bottom. There we go. And you just take the spring form there and just pick it up just like that. See how pretty that is? And that's why I like to put the crust all the way to the side. See what you get? When I cut this later, you'll see how the crust will come all the way up to the side. That's what I like when I do my cheesecakes. Perfectly cheesecake. So in a second here, I'm gonna step off, cut me a slice, and we'll put a little cherries on there. We're gonna try this. But let me answer this question I get all the time. Why are you single? This is a weird question to ask. Yes, I've been single pretty much, I guess all my life, never been married, never had a significant other for many, many years. And as growing up in the country, I guess my way I was raised and the standards and the, and the, uh, thoughts and beliefs instilled in me with my parents. And I came to the big, big city was different. I come from a town of 700 people to a town of three and it had a million people. It was just uh, different standards. When I come here, I had this hard work ethics and different things that I didn't do. And it kind of... I don't know how they put it in. I'm gonna put this show as far as I can. When I meet young ladies and stuff, and I was a young, upcoming chef, and I was very focused on my career, and a lot of people didn't understand that. Instead of me going out to clubs and and things like that, I'm mostly okay. I'm gonna work and uh, try to build for the future, try to save, because I was living in a one-bedroom apartment, didn't have much money, little old raggedy truck, and I get what. People try to get in relationships and go out with, you know, different uh, ladies and they want, okay, why you can't go there? Why you can't go there? Well, I got to work. I got to work on weekends. I got to work at night. I can't afford to go there. And as it progressed, it just progressed like, okay, I don't do drugs. I don't go out and drink. I just I wasn't exposed to that as a kid. I didn't see alcohol in our home. Never did drugs in my life till this day. And it just progressed to that point. I guess I had different standards and things like that that a lot of females did. And then when I did get in a relationship, whining, I mean, I'm just old school. You're supposed to whine and dine. One particular girl I, you know, had really, really deep feelings for that really messed me up. I think it scarred me for years. And uh, it was her birthday. I worked with her. It was, I think I was like 23 years old. I found out it was her birthday at work and I took her flowers and roses and went to folding and got her this perfume red and really, really overwhelmed her at work in front of everybody. And I thought it was a really special thing to do. I thought we had a really good thing going and for the last two or three months we did find out she had somebody on the side too. And it just really, really it just kind of like, really, this is what the world is all about. I'm a young. And it happened to me a couple of times. Now, I got to the point is, really, this is what it's about, the relationship. I just can't really deal with that. And as I got older, it's like, look, I'm going to focus on my job. I'm going to focus on building something where I don't have to. My parents always taught me to be self-dependent and independent. My mama taught me how to cook. My mama taught me how to wash clothes, iron clothes, keep house. My daddy taught me how to do everything from changing the oil, changing the tire, so I'm so self-dependent. As I grew up, I didn't rely on anybody, didn't need anybody. And I guess as I grew up, 
I've just been so self-reliant and that kind of has guesses in a short, uh, make a short uh, thing short. It's like I'm just so self-dependent and don't need anyone. I can't say, oh, everybody needs somebody. Yeah, that's true. But till this day, like I always tell my mom, I'm going to wait till God brings someone into my life. I'm not going to give up on true love, give up on marriage. Never can. People get married at old ages. Yeah, I'm 53 years old. And like I tell people, they ask, why you ain't married? You going to get married? When God brings someone, beautiful lady, into my life, I'll know that. When they bring the right one in my life, I will definitely know that. I'm never going to give up on love or what like that. But people always ask, why are you saying whatever? I just have standards. Some people consider me boring. Like I say, ever since I was young, never drinking in alcohol, never done drugs in it. I love going to church. I love God. And some people, a lot of people consider that boring. I mean, a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's a, a lot of people consider that boring. If you don't drink, you don't go out. You don't party, especially at a young age, you're boring, and especially females, they don't want nothing to do with you. They want the young guy with the flashy clothes and the cars and the money to go out and drinking and partying up so they can have fun, and that wasn't me. And even to this day, I'm just a laid-back guy, individual, and my friends that I hang out with are pretty much the same way. I've had the same friends for like 28 years, almost 30 years, and we are the same. We don't drink, we don't go party, work out, but we have so much fun together. It's amazing how much fun we have without doing all that stuff. And we all have a strong belief in God Almighty. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to close the book on that part of my life, but I just had standards I put up, and it just never, the right person to match that never came along. So, just want to ask that question and um, went in a little bit more detail. But why I'm single, why I'm not married, or whatever, it's because it just had a in the uh, lame. Let me just break it down. Like I say again, I just had a bad experiences growing up. It kind of scarred me for a long time and just made me, like I say, gun shy. I hate to bro brush every female with a broad stroke, but it just puts your defense mechanism up and you build up a wall and you're very apprehensive at things and trust issues. Maybe that's what it is for certain females. What is they do it? They have an ulterior motive. But right now, i worked a long time, worked hard to get what I can, and I saw a lot of people didn't support me along the way. Now I'm to the point where I'm pretty much not where I want to be, but I believe me, I'm very successful than most at this point and age in my life, and I don't want nobody to just come in and just, I don't know what the uh, turn motives are so anyway now i'm gonna step off here and um get this cheesecake cut because this is gonna be like i say this is an awesome awesome uh valentine's day dessert for your wife your husband significant other whatever and i do this a lot of time for my friends ready to whatever for their wives husband or whatever and they think it's absolutely amazing so i'm gonna cut this cut this cheesecake Put me some cherries on him. I'll show you how beautiful this thing is. So we'll be right back. All right, y'all. We are back here. Look at this here, y'all. Look at that goodness right there. I put a little cherries on top of there. I like cherries on my cheesecake. See that? Look at that. Creamy, smooth. Let me show you the one I cut here. Let me show you the one I cut here. Look at that. Nice, smooth cheesecake. Alright, y'all, now here for the taste test. For the taste test, y'all. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Look at this, y'all. I got a first piece here. Mm, mm. Oh, wow, y'all. Mm. I'm gonna fell over the camera so good and creamy. Mm, mm, mm. I'm telling y'all, I've served it many, many years. For my friends and neighbors, like I say, for Valentine's, just give, sometimes give them the whole cheesecake. I'll make two. Half for me and one for them, and then I'll freeze a half. I can't eat this whole cheesecake. This is going to take me a while to eat one piece. It's that rich, y'all. If you ever eaten cheesecake, you know how rich it is. And they absolutely love it. And you see how simple it is to put together. This will make any couple happy, y'all. It makes me happy, and I'm single, but... 
anyway, I just hope y'all like this little video. Like I said, I just wanted to put that little question in there. I'm a happy person. I'm not a, one of them lonely, depressed type person. I'm happy. I love life. And like I say, when God brings someone into my life, a nice, beautiful lady in my life, I will open it with, with welcome it with open arms. But it has to be through God. No other thing. I'm not going to go with the internet and all this stuff these days. It is horrible. I don't know how people get out, and especially young people, and date and find people. The internet is a dangerous place. The people is not who they say they are. Believe me, it's, it's horrible. There's no more old school ways of finding people, you know. But anyway, I, let me close this video out. This is a different type video. Y'all probably say, this guy is crazy. Just rumbling it on. But just something I had to bring out. I think Valentine's Day video is the best way to do it. But anyway, y'all, if you like this video, please share, please comment, please subscribe. Please follow my other social media accounts, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest, and OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Remember the hashtag 2022, helping others with a purpose, Old School Soul Food. And until next time, have a blessed Old School Soul Food day, and I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Bye.